Assalamu alaikum. Uh, as we get ready to get started in the next uh, five or so minutes, I want to ask those who are downstairs. Again, we have been having an appreciation uh, here since 11 o'clock for the veterans, and we want to again extend that regard to all our veterans. Uh, but we're asking those who are downstairs, uh, again, if you're able to come upstairs, uh, please begin to make your way upstairs because we're going to obviously have the Jummah on downstairs and we don't want to disturb those who are beginning to listen to the Jummah uh, downstairs. So all the able body, please begin to, to make your way upstairs and because we're asking our brothers who are up here to please begin to close in the, the gaps. And we're going to be hearing from our, our guest today is the Imam uh, Vernon Fareed. Uh, from the Norfolk, Virginia area. We appreciate him uh, for being here with us, and he'll also be here with us uh, tomorrow as our keynote speaker as we're celebrating marriage. Uh, so we look to see, uh, hear from him uh, again tomorrow as well. And uh, we'll be leaving after Juma, going to the African American Civil War Museum, uh, where we're going to have a program on the inside. Uh, and then we're going to come outside and we're going to do a, a memorial ceremony uh, for the Civil War uh, veterans. And really, on behalf of all veterans, uh, we will lay a wreath uh, there as well. And so we're hoping that most of you here uh, will join us for that event. Uh, at the, and there, there are some maps downstairs. Uh, if you don't know how to get there, it's about five blocks from here. Off of what, Tempton U, I believe, Tempton U Street. So we do we'll have some maps downstairs on the table. The program starts at about 2.45. Uh, so again, we'll have some transition time to leave the masjid, uh, support the vendors, and then make our way over there to support uh, this program. Very important program, especially in light of, uh, we're, we're going, we've chosen this year again, uh, we've done it in the past, but to go to the uh, African American Civil War Museum, uh, because among the things that have been said throughout the year uh, is that uh, there's been a movement for Black Lives Matter. And again, of course, the, civil, the African American Civil War Museum highlights and shown this kind of sacrifices. Uh, that's just one, one point in time, but, but throughout the whole history of America, those kind of sacrifices have been made. So we're going to go there and have a program. We're going to hear from various uh, leaders, uh, and then we uh, uh, do this symbolic uh, replaying as well. We do have our Muslim American Veterans Association that's hosting this event, and you should see many of them with their, their hair gear on. Uh, throughout the day, and they're here very distinguished, and we really want to thank all of them uh, for their service, but not just for their service, for their sacrifice. Uh, so we'll wait a few minutes, and we'll get ready to hear from our Khatib, Imam Bernard Fareed. Assalamu alaikum. I 
اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي الصلاة حي الصلاة حي الصلاة حي الصلاة Silence your cell phones and move up closer and tighten up the ranks. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Nakhmaduhu wa nasta'inahu wa nasta'kfirhu wa nukminu bihi as a أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد أيها المسلمون dear Muslims I greet you in the greetings of peace in the Quran in Arabic language السلام عليكم we give the praise and thanks to Allah Highly glorified is God. We thank Him for this day, the day of Juma, and we thank Him for this gathering, this honorable gathering of honorable people. I'm particularly uh, honored and humbled to be here to address you on this occasion. First, because it is Juma, and also because this is a day that has been set aside to honor our veterans those who have served and are still serving our military protecting this nation honorably they are muslims they are americans and they have sacrificed their lives and they have done it in an honorable fashion and that's something that we should never take for granted so i will be addressing you who are veterans and the concerns that we have for America and respecting the sacrifices of those of you who have who fit this description we know that always in the history of man there have always been attempts to control the life of the common person the plan of satan the plan of the devil himself it has always been his objective to subject the human person under his subservience under his rule and to be under his control we know that the history tells us i'm talking about revelation tells us that he was given and i'm going to use this term a delay of execution a stay of execution and that he was allowed to go on his way and do his work and he would have the opportunity to disprove the human person to be unworthy of serving the one true god Allah so we have by the grace of god we have limited free will we don't have unlimited free will our will is limited and there are some things that happen in life that are 
by the hands of men, by the hands of people. And then there are things that override what man does, what human being, beings do. That is by the control of God. So Allah says in the Quran, Yadallahi, ala jama'ah. It means the hand of God is on the collective body, the collective group. When we understand that expression in the Quran, then we know that it doesn't mean that the, the literal hand, figuratively, it is speaking of the control of God, the control of Allah. Yet Allah ala jama'ah. The control of God is on the collective body, the collective group. So as individuals, we should never think of ourselves as being more important, as being bigger, as being more significant than the collective body, the collective group. This not only applies to Muslims, this applies to the whole world. No nationality, no country, no group, no small group, no individual to see themselves as bigger than the collective group. And God's control, Allah's control, is on the collective body. Therefore, there will be things moving all the time. There will be things happening all the time. There will be things that we can see and we can't see. There will be things that we can understand and things that we can't understand. That God himself, Allah himself, will be directing to achieve the end that he wants for humanity. And not the end that the corruptors and the schemers in the world want. Yet Allahi, Allah Jama'ah, the hand of God, is on the collective body. This bears our reflection, dear believers, all of us. We should think about this. When we, what we are seeing today in the world today, we are seeing the conclusion. We are seeing uh, the uh, Yom Iddin. Yom Iddin, as it speaks about in the al fatiha Yom Iddin, uh, they translate that the day of judgment. But it, it, it really means the day when all matters are being brought to a conclusion. And that's what's happening now. So we are seeing extremes. Extremes to the right. Extremes to the left. Extremes in the weather. Extremes in the thinking. Extremes in the behavior. Extremism whether it's to the right or to the left, is the way of the shaitan. It is the way of the devil. And that's what we are witnessing today. We are seeing things that we can't always grasp and explain and understand. Many of the things that we, we are seeing, as I said earlier, uh, Allah allows us to have free will. But that will that we have has restrictions on it. It's not unlimited. Certain things he will allow us to do. And uh, Allah allows it, he says, by law, by the permission of God, things are allowed to happen. We are allowed to do things. We are allowed to say things. We are allowed to make uh, decisions. We are allowed to have expression. We are allowed to draw conclusions. By the permission of Allah, law. But that, those expressions, those conclusions, those decisions, those perspectives that we have about life, about humanity, are not final. The big decision, the overriding decision, is with Allah. You know, what we just witnessed in the political spectrum, should we be upset about that? Are we worried about that? There's some concern, honestly. But for Muslims, we have to ask, where is the faith? There's never been, there's nowhere in the Quran where Allah tells us to put our trust in politicians. There's nowhere in the Quran where Allah tells us to follow the leadership of this world. Allah says, Ati'ullaha wa ati'u rasulah wa ulil amri minkum. Obey God and obey his messenger and those who are charged with authority from among you. Our leadership and the guidance for our life, it is with the Quran. It has always been with the Quran. It will remain with the Quran. 
And we, therefore, should not be totally disturbed, totally upset, totally concerned. Because these things, for us, are somewhat inconsequential. Our life is dependent on the life that Allah wants for us. It is dependent on us following the Quran, obeying the words of Allah in his book, the scripture called Quran. It is contingent upon us following and obeying Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prayers and the peace be on the Prophet. That's where our lives should be. That's where our thinking should be. And when your thinking is with that, who can harm you in the world? Who can do anything to you in the world? Who can stop you in the world? If you have on your side the Lord of all the worlds, Rabbi al Alameen, if you have on your side the great creator, Allah, if you have on your side the one who sees everything, El Muhammad, you have on your side the one who is most holy, El Qudus, you have on your side the one who is greater, Akbar, Allah, who can harm you? Who can stop you? Who can impede your progress? No one. Muslims have to have faith in what Allah told us to have faith in. Allah says in the Quran, وَتَوَقَعَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِلْ And put your trust in Allah. And Allah is sufficient to be trusted. Put your trust in Allah. Tawaka ala Allah. Put your trust in Allah. Your trust should not be with the person who occupies the seat of president of the United States. Your trust should not be with the prime minister of Israel. Your trust should not be with the king of Egypt or the ruler in Saudi Arabia. Your trust should not be with the governor of the state or the mayor of the city or the councilwoman or the ward boss. Your trust should be with Allah. That's where our trust should be. We shouldn't be as disturbed as some people who don't have the light that we have. We have the light. We have the guidance. We should be working like ants to establish our lives. That's where our focus should be. We can't afford to get distracted. Allah will take care of those small people who think they're big. Allah will take care of them. Allah will show them the evil of their ways. Allah will make them humble themselves, submit and bow. And he will prove to them that he is God. Allahu Akbar. Allah will prove to them that he is the God. I'm talking about the great creator. And I say to, 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 to Christians all the time, we have Christians sometimes among us. I say when we say Allah, we're not talking about a God just for the Muslims. Allah is the God. Christians in the Middle East, whose, Arabic, whose language is Arabic, when they refer to God, they say Allah. That's their language. They're talking about the great creator, the one and only creator, Allah, the God. That's the one that we believe in. That's the one that we put our trust in. That's the one that we have faith in. That's the one that we submit to. That's the one that we bow down to. That's the one that we believe in. That's the one that has all the power. All the power. And he only allows the human being to have a little bit of authority. A little bit of decision making. A little bit of input. A little bit of the world and what the world has to offer. He allows a human being just to have a little bit of it. There are people who want to plan your life and plan my life. And Allah will have none of it. He will have none of it. If you, if someone plans your life, it's because you allowed them to plan your life. But believe me, there are people who want to do it. And they're always scheming. They're always 
planning. They're always somewhere making decisions to structure your life, to structure my life, and to make our lives into what they want it to be, which is to be subservient to them so that they can reap the benefits of this world, so they can reap the great treasures of this world. We have to stay with the Quran. Stay with the Quran and stay with the life, example, and teachings of Muhammad the prophet, and we will be successful. In fact, if you have the faith that Allah told you to have in the Quran, he says you are already successful. He says, Qad at lahel mu'minun. The believers are already successful. Yeah, it's already. Cut means past tense. You, know, you will be successful. You're already successful if you are a believer. That's not to say that there are not things in the world that we shouldn't want and shouldn't desire and shouldn't pursue. There are things in the world. Allah wants us to get our share of this dunya. That's, that's given to us in the Quran. Strive for all the things. I could give it to you in Arabic, but strive for all the things in the afterlife. But don't forget your share of this material world. Don't forget your share of this material world. One of our imams, a friend of mine and a close associate of the late Imam W.D. Muhammad, may Allah have mercy on him and grant him paradise. I was just talking to him a few days ago, and he shared with me uh, something Imam Muhammad told him. He said, he said, Imam, he said, you know, I'm not worried about our people going back going back to, to shirk. He said, I'm not worried about our people uh, fasting in the month of Ramadan. I'm not worried about our people uh, fasting, uh, uh, making hajj. He, in effect, what he said, he, he, he mentioned all of the pillars. He said, you notice there was one pillar that I left out. He said, there was one that I left out. He said, I did that intentionally. The one that I'm most concerned about is the one regarding charity. He said, that's, that's my concern. He said, because we don't have the resources to establish our life. And we have to do more. That's the one that concerns me. We have to do more to get the resources to establish our life. We need schools that we can send our children to. And the teachers of those schools will be Muslims. And they will be teaching Quranic Arabic language. They will be te teaching the disciplines of knowledge, of science, of hadith, fiqh, sharia, math, astronomy, and so on and so forth. All these sciences. We have to have our own schools. We have to have our own hospitals so that when we get sick, we can carry them to Dr. Aziz, Sister Shafika, Dr. Shafika, or the nurse Halima. We can carry them to our own facilities and get the kind of treatment and not have to worry about your loved one being somewhere and not being cared about and taken care of in a manner that they should. We have to have establishment for our lives. That's where our focus should be. Our focus right now should not be waiting on someone in the White House to tell us how to establish our lives. Brothers and sisters, don't cry over that. Don't lose any sleep over that. Allah is in charge. He's always in charge. There's never a moment, never a second, when he's not in charge. He's always in charge. So he got that. We have to do our part. We have to perform our role, carry out our responsibility of establishing the good life that Allah wants us to establish in this world. People again, while you sleep, they're trying to plan your life. While you're blind and unconscious, even though you're walking around with all the appearances of being conscious. There are people who are planning your life, planning your future. They are making decisions in the boardrooms. They are making decisions up in the ivory towers. They are making decisions around the corner where you can't see them, on the golf course, 
They're making decisions for your life and my life. But we too have to make decisions. So you make all the decisions you want. I'm not going down your street. I'm not following your plan. Allah says in the Quran, wa makaru, wa makaru Allahu, wa Allahu khairu makarin. And I'm going to not translate this the way that many of you heard it. They plan and God plans and God is the best of planners. That's true. But let me give it to you a little bit more uh, clear. They strategize. Well, Makaru, they strategize. Well, Makaru, Allahu, and Allah strategizes. Well, Allahu, Khairu, Makarin. And Allah is the best of strategic planners. He's the best of strategic planners. So while people are planning to form your life, to control your life, to direct your life, to carry your life in the way that they want it to go, Allah sees them, Allah hears them when they're in the private quarters with the lights out, the shades down, guards all around the building to make sure that nobody hears it, going in secret chambers. Allah sees it all. He knows it all. And he has a plan for humanity that's bigger than the plan that they have. And the plan of Allah, the strategy of Allah, it always overrides whatever strategy they come up with. They can't defeat Allah. You know, even the Satan. We, we, we don't have to be fearful of Satan. And Allah tells us in the Quran. He says it. He said, I just called them and they came. Stupid. I just called them and they came. I had no control over them. I had no power over them. He confesses. The only thing I did is call them. And they came. So we shouldn't give ourselves to the call of the Satan, the, sa the call of the devil. We should give ourselves to the call that we were just called to, just summoned to. Allahu Akbar, the Muezzin said. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I don't care where you are on the face of the earth. East, west, north, south. God is greater. God is bigger. God is more important. God is more significant. And you call to witness. Ashhadu in la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu in la ilaha illallah. We witness that there's nothing deserving worship except Allah. Nothing deserving worship. I said nothing deserving worship except Allah. We witness. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And we witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. He's a messenger of God. He came with a message. Rasulullah. He's called Rasulullah. He's God's messenger. He's Allah's messenger. He's not your messenger. He's not my messenger. We didn't have no message to give him. And we didn't send him. Allah gave him the message and Allah sent him. And he sent him to humanity. And Allah says of him, he's ka'afat and lil nas. He's sufficient. He's sufficient for the people. He's sufficient for humanity. He's enough for humanity. So as a, as a human example, we don't need any, somebody to come before us claiming to be a prophet, or claiming to be divine. We don't need anybody coming before us with all these claims and all these big titles and claiming that they're going to do this for us and do that for us. The most important thing is structuring our life and preserving and protecting our life. That's what Allah wants for us. Let us stop here and ask Allah for forgiveness. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wal fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab an-nar. Amen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. الحمد لله.
الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والارض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يهدلون اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم dear muslims dear believers we have or we are in this day and time in what is the final day the final time when all matters are being brought to a conclusion i want to share with you a statement a quote from imam wd muhammad may allah have mercy on him and grant him paradise he said allah created us to grow the growing process is a process of overcoming conflicts and adversities in the quote allah tells us in the quran that he created the human person into toil and struggle so life is not a bed of roses life is not going to be without conflict and adversaries we are always going to have conflict and adversaries in our life but those conflicts and those adversarial persons or those adversarial groups should never rule your life and should never alter the direction that you should be marching in that you should be going in we muslims should stay on the mustaqim the straight path that's the path that allah told us to stay on that's the path that we pray for in the al fatiha we pray to be on the mustaqim to be put on the mustaqim so why would you let or i let someone on pennsylvania avenue take me off of the mustaqim they can't do it i'm not worried about that i hope you're not worried about that i hope that muslims will keep their faith where our faith should have been all the time and that is with allah keep your faith with allah stay with muhammad the prophet praise and peace be on him his leadership who had more adversaries than muhammad the prophet do you think that what he experienced from the time he was a child from the time he was a baby growing up without parents who has experienced which one of us have experienced the hardship that he's experienced and he was the messenger of god so if allah allowed that to happen to him what do you think should happen to us if allah allowed him to experience that what do you think we should experience but what did it do for muhammad prayers and peace be on the prophet it strengthened him it made him more honorable it made him more dignified it made him more commitment committed it made him stand up it made him a stronger believer in his lord and his creator and he was the best he's the best example he's the best example of a human person that's what we believe i don't know about you that's what i believe that's what we believe as muslims he's the best example of a human person that god has ever put on the face of the earth he submitted himself allah is akbar allah is akbar he submitted himself totally are we saying that muhammad didn't have any any mistakes he didn't make any mistakes yes so walk out of law put your trust in god abasa it says it says abasa wa tawalla he frowned and turned away from the blind man you know the story in the quran allah put that in the quran for a reason to remind us that even muhammad he had some flaws he made some mistakes but is that a big matter in comparison to the mistakes that we made in comparison to the flaws that we have in comparison to the sins that we commit no that's a small matter he just frowned when the blind man was trying to get his attention he frowned and turned away from the blind man and gave his attention to the affluent people in society and that was a mistake it was a small matter though in contrast to the, the mistakes and the and the errors and the sins and stuff that we commit but it's there but still muhammad is called the perfect man 
Why is he called the perfect man? He's called the perfect man because in his character, in his makeup, in his desire, he had perfect, always had perfect intention. See, see, our problem is we don't always have perfect intention. We intend to do some harm to some people sometimes. <laughs> and, and, and the Quran could be sitting right over top of your head. And you still say, I'm, I'm going to take care of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really going to take it. So you, yeah, we have intention on doing some some bad. It's look, man, it, it, man, you know the Quran says so and so and so. Yeah, I know, but I ain't, I ain't there yet, brother. I ain't quite got it yet. I ain't that strong yet. So I, right now I got to get this off my chest. So we, 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 we have these kinds of inclinations. Allah says he left. Uh, there are two things that we left with. That is the Quran and the Muhammad's Sunnah, his way. Fikum. Say, I leave in you two things. Two things. It says, Fikum, in you. Because if it's not in you, you ain't got it. It can be all around you. But if it's not in you, you don't have it. Then the brother standing next to you might have it. The sister standing over there might have it. But you don't have it. Unless it's internalized within you. So we are here today to also on this blessed day, the day of Juma. This is the day when we congregate. This is the day when we come together. And we come together to benefit from the Quran, the final revelation called Quran, and we benefit from the teachings and life example of Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prayers and the peace be on him. But we're also here today to pay tribute to our veterans. Again, our brothers and sisters who have served honorably in our, uh, this, this military in this country, the United States, some of them have lost lives. Some lost their lives. Some of them lost limbs. Some of them lost their minds, literally, because of the trauma that they experienced. They came back from the Vietnam War. They came back from perhaps the Korean War or some other war, and they were never the same again. They sacrificed their lives. They gave their intelligence. They gave their blood, sweat, and tears for this country. Do you think that we're going to allow somebody to tell us that we got to leave here? Over my dead body. Over our dead body. Not when we built this country up on our backs. See, for some of you who don't know the history, maybe there's some of you who don't know the history. We built this country on our backs. I'm talking about us and our parents and our great-grandparents and our foreparents before them. We built this country on our backs. We're not going to let anybody put us out. We're not going to let anybody stop us. We're not going to let anybody hold us back from the great treasures that Allah has offered to us. Just a few weeks ago, we were blessed in Norfolk, Virginia, to host uh, our Muslim brother, Kidda Khan, who is the gold star parent, as you know, of the, uh, the son uh, who lost his life in military combat. Uh, Captain, Captain Humayun Khan, who lost his life. And he trying to protect those who are under his leadership, under his command. He told them to stay back when a, a, a car, a car pulled up. And he didn't know what was in the car, but he asked them to get down, stay back. And he went to investigate. And when he went to investigate, he was blown to bits. He was blown to pieces. He lost his life. And then we had some person. I didn't, I thought to say something, but uh, I forgot this is Juma. So I got to control myself too. You know, uh, some person to come along to condemn him. To condemn him. And he had to be told, what have you done? What have you done to sacrifice? What sacrifices have you made? Do you even know what the Constitution of the United States says? If you don't, I can loan you my copy. Yeah, he had to be reminded of that. That just as these honorable men and women here today have given their lives, have sacrificed a great deal, we don't know the trauma that they have experienced. We don't know what they've seen in war. We don't know what they go through emotionally, what they go through physically. We don't know from day to day the struggle and the challenge that they have. And they did this out of the preservation and the safety 
and the protection of this nation. And do you think we're not going to stand with them? We're going to stand with them. We're going to honor them. And Allah is with you, brothers. Allah is with you. And we are with you. Allah is with you, sisters. Those of you. I know there's some sisters, too, who have served in the military. Allah is with you. And we are with you. And we Muslims. We're one ummah. I don't care if you come from China. I don't care if you come from Indonesia. I don't care if you come from Somalia. I don't care if you come from Sudan. I don't care if you come from Pakistan. I don't care where you are from. If you say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm with you. And I hope you're with me. And we stand together as one community. So I was saying that we had the brother there, Kidda Khan. And he spoke with tears in his eyes. He spoke about this country and this nation. And that he didn't want to see the division uh, uh, come about in this nation. It was, a, it was a great occasion. It was a big occasion. Many of the national news networks, you know, NBC, ABC, New York Times, Washington Post, Associated Press, many of them were there to cover that event. When he was expressing himself, he was expressing from his heart what he was feeling. And he is a person who migrated here from Pakistan in recent years. I say in recent years because we've been here a long time. I'm talking about us. We've been here a long time. You know, we, 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 we are the pylons. You know, we are the columns. We are the bricks. We are the mortar that's holding up, that held up this great nation, that built this great nation. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, don't be disturbed. Don't be depressed about what has happened recently. That's a wake-up call for the whole nation. You know, Allah, Allah, Allah operates in ways that we can't understand all the time. You, you, we can't always understand why Allah does it. You say, well, why would Allah let Donald Trump become president of the United States? I didn't mean to call his name, but I did. You know? Why, why, did, why not Allah allow him to come president of the United States? Why not? Why not? Extremism. Extremism is what we're seeing. Allah wants you to see extremism. He didn't create it. Man created it. You, you, you would be with me if I told you the whole story. You know, you, Frankenstein, Frankenstein was created. Yeah, he was created. He, he had somebody who created him. He didn't just pop up. He was created. So the Frankenstein that we are seeing now was created. And it's a sign of extremism. Allah wants us to see the signs so we can take heed of the signs. So we can learn. And, and, and I'll tell you this. I'm going to conclude in just a minute. Allah says in the Quran, and this too shall pass. And this too shall pass. As I told the reporter. They're going to, time is going to come, we're going to be looking in the rear view mirror. See, that was back then. That's gone now, man. That's history. That's over with. We ain't got to worry about that now, man. We're moving ahead. But if we stay with the life that Allah wants us to have, the decent life, the honorable life, the life of educated people, the life of productive people, the life of people who want to see Righteousness in society. If we stay with that life, we're going to be all right. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get diverted. Don't let your attention get diverted. Work. Yes, work for change. Insist on change. Hold people accountable. Hold them responsible. But again, I say to you, why would you allow yourself to be put into a position where you start talking about this is their country. This is their nation. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. You're crazy. You're crazy if you think that way. After we have built this nation on our backs, too many people. I never knew my great-grandparents, except through research. But I never saw them. I never looked them in the eyes. I never saw them in the cotton fields. I never saw them pu pilling, uh, pulling the, 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 the wagons. I never saw those of my parents, my great-grandparents, or your great-grandparents, who were lynched. 
who were beaten. The, 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 the grandmothers, the great grandmothers, and the aunts, and the, and the daughters who were raped. And this was done in broad daylight with the support of forces in America. Yeah, we are uh, past that to a large degree, even though we still got some of that going on in certain places. But we can't forget that. And because that has happened, dear believers, we can't abandon this nation and say it's theirs. No, it's mine, it's yours. And we're going to fight for what belongs to us. Fight for what belongs to you. I don't mean this in the wrong way, so I hope nobody in the media takes this in the wrong way. Because, again, the words of Imam W.D. Muhammad, he said the final battle ground or the final battlefield is life. Life is the final battlefield. Life is the final battlefield. Not Vietnam, not Korea, not America. Life is the final battlefield. And each one of us, we are in that battle, we are in that war, and we are veterans of that war. That we are fighting for our lives every day. You have to fight for your life. Nobody's going to give you your life. Nobody's going to come and hand it to you on a silver platter and say, here's your life that God said that you're supposed to have. Here's all of the, the material things that God supposed to say you're supposed to have. Here's all the spiritual things that God said you're supposed to have. Here's the master that you've been praying for. I'm going to build it for you. Here's the hospital that you so badly need. Let us build it for you. Nobody's going to do that. We have to do that. And we have to do that together. So let us stay together. Let us bond together. Let us work together. Let us worship together. Let us keep our faith in Allah. And follow his messenger and our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we do that, we'll be successful. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum.